Hello everyone. Today we will move on to another new unit on work. Let's look at the outline for today's lecture. In the beginning, we will learn different ways to describe work in terms of its nature, and we will look at seven different verbs to see how we can differentiate different modes of seeing. Secondly, we will start reading a new article called "A Real Life Crime Fighting Superpower." In this article, we are looking at a group of people whose memorization of human faces is especially good, and how they help with the police officers. Then we will do some comprehension exercise to check your understanding of the article. And I am going to challenge you a bit more by asking you a few questions, so that you can start thinking critically. And then we will do something fun together. I am going to invite you to play a game to see how good you are at remembering people's faces. And then I'm going to invite you to do a personality test. I ask my students to do this test every year, and so far,、uh, they all said the test result is quite accurate. I highly recommend this test. Okay, to you. Finally, for the grammar portion, we will look at how to use gerunds and infinitives properly in different situations. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, could everyone take out your textbook, Perspective Two, and turn to page fifty-six and fifty-seven? On page fifty-six, I would like you to look at activity two. In activity two, you see ten sentences, with each sentence having a bold-faced word. Right? These bold-faced words are all used to describe jobs. I have put them into four different categories here, in terms of their parts of speech. Some of the words are not given a definitions, so I will give their definitions in the chart here. Let's start from the now. Here, we only have one now. Career prospect. Prospect refers to the possibility of being successful. Okay, so career prospects means the possibility of being successful in doing、uh, a job in a particular field. An adjective, competitive. Competitive means、uh, wanting to win. Okay, wanting to win. Flexible means able to adapt to changes. Well paid means you are paid enough. For your job, stressful, meaning you are under a lot of pressure. Demanding, it means needing a lot of time, attention, or energy. For example, in a way, our summer course is demanding because it requires everybody to finish eight units in just two months. So that's quite demanding because you need a lot of time, attention, and energy to learn properly. And creative means to think outside the box. Okay, so these are the nouns and adjectives. For verbs, here we have work long hours, meaning you work more than eight hours. That would be considered work working long hours. And lastly. Prepositional phrases.、Uh, we use them to describe、uh, what kind of job we are doing. Okay, so for example, you can say, "Oh, my sister is working in the hospitality industry." So, hospitality. The hospitality industry refers to people who work in hotels or restaurants. 
that is called the hospitality industry. And in charge of this phrase is used to describe your duties. For example, as the instructor of this course, I'm in charge of going over the articles,、uh, grammar points, and also main ideas in the TED Talks. Okay, so these are the ten words to describe work. Now, could you please take a look at activity three? Let's. Use this activity to check whether or not you can use the words we just introduced properly. Please pause the video lecture to finish this activity yourself. Okay, I assume you just finish what I ask you to do. Now let's go over this、uh, paragraph. A survey about the reasons people leave their jobs shows some surprising results. So this is the topic sentence of this paragraph, right? The topic is about why people leave their jobs, and the focus is surprising results, something that surprised us. You might think that people want more money, so they move to jobs that are or prefer an easy life. So the previous sentence here is talking about money. Of course, we need a, a word about that topic too. So here you was put down well paid or prefer an easy life. Some people change their jobs because they want to live an easier life, but in fact, this is not always the case. Okay, many employees are happy to what in what jobs. So it's not always about money or getting an easier life. Then the two words here might not be relevant to money or anything easy. So we will have the opposite: work long hours in demanding jobs. Demanding again, it means needing a lot of attention or energy, where they are. Large teams working with important clients. So here we see words about people's responsibilities, right? So you will put down the phrase "in charge of," where they are in charge of a lot of people and working with important customers. In return, they want exciting in their chosen what. In other words, when you work with important people. You are more likely to succeed. So we put down career prospects in their chosen industry. So a lot of people they chose to have challenging tasks so that they have more chances to be successful in what they do. Work only becomes what if employers refuse to listen to their workers' needs or don't trust them with responsibility. So here we have、uh, two negative things after the conditional clause if here, right? So we need to choose something relevant to negative things, which is stressful. When Your empl employers do not listen to your suggestions, or they don't trust you. Then you will feel stressful. So employers are the people who you work for, okay? And employees are people who work under you. Don't mess these two words up. For example, employees with a long commute. So what is a commute? A commute means. The travel from a place to another may want more hours. So we are talking about time here, right? So the word flexible should be used here. The lesson for business to keep good employees, you need to trust them and listen to them. So how do we stay successful in business? The keys are: you need to、uh, keep. Your employees who are responsible, okay, by your sides. How you need to trust them and listen to them, okay. So hopefully you got all the words right here. Okay, 
Now let's move on to activity five. In activity five, let's talk about the differences between part-time and temporary work, and to work in and to work on, and finally the difference between a full-time job and work long hours. First of all, part-time refers to working a few hours or a few days a week, and temporary. Work means works that last a short time, just a few weeks or months. For example, your mother's company is running out of、uh, people to help them with a new project, so they ask you to help for a month. Then that would be a temporary job. On the other hand, if you get a part-time jobs, it means you need to stay. Uh, at a store for a few hours, for uh maybe three times, uh three times a week, and you do that for a long term. That would be a part time job, okay. And secondly, when you are working in something, it means you work in an industry or a type of job. And when you say you work on something, it you means you work on a project, something temporary. Again. Work in refers to doing something in a certain field for a long time, and work on something refers to doing something temporarily. Finally, full-time jobs okay refers to job that lasts eight hours a day, five days a week okay, and long hours refers to you are working more than eight hours a day okay. So for example. If you work ten hours a day, then you are working long hours. Okay, so long hour culture is quite common in Asia, but this is totally unacceptable in America or in Europe. Okay, so these are the differences between these phrases. Okay, between these phrases. Okay, so that's it for the vocabulary about work. Okay, now please turn to page sixty. On page sixty, let's take a look at seven verbs about seeing. First of all, please take a look at activity one. In activity one, you see seven sentences with each word underlined. Okay, so please. Read the sentences and match them with the correct definition below A to G. Please pause the video lecture and then come back to go over the answers with me. Okay, so I assume you just finished what I asked you to do. Now let's take a look at the first sentence. The police spotted him leaving parking lot in a van. So spotted. Or spot, what does it mean in this situation? It means to see someone or something because you were looking for them. Okay, so you spot someone. Okay, when you are looking for them. Second, she stole from three stores and they caught her on camera. So, catch here has nothing to do with getting something using your hands from someone. So here it means to see someone doing something wrong. For example, the police officer caught twenty people gathering on the street without wearing their masks. So this is definitely something we cannot do right now during the pandemic. Number three, he only glanced at the woman, but he knew who she was immediately. So glance. Okay, we actually have come across this word when we were talking about reading strategies. Again, what does it mean? It means to look at something quickly. Okay, look at something or someone quickly. So when do we glance? When we read? When we do skimming? We glance at the article, right? Number four. I wave at her, but I do not think she noticed me because she didn't stop to say hello. So notice means to become aware of someone or something. Okay. 
So these are the first four sentences. Number five, the person in the photo was identified as Adam Smith. When you can identify someone, it means you can tell who they are. Okay, identify. Number six, officers observe people leaving and entering the building entrance throughout the night. So, what does it mean to observe? Observe means to watch someone or something carefully, to learn information. Finally, recognize. I recognize an old friend at the train station, even though I haven't seen her for years. So, to、uh, to recognize means to know who the person is because you have seen them before. Okay, I will correct this typo here. It should be and not and. Okay, hopefully you got all the definitions right. Okay, so the seven. Words about seeing today's are caught, glance, notice, identify, observe, and recognize. Let's do some more practice to help you differentiate these words. Look at activity. Look at activity two, please. Okay. Look at activity two. So in activity two, you need to rewrite the sentences, replacing the words in boldface with the correct form. Okay. And the words you need to use are the words from activity one. So again, pause the video lecture and come back when you are done. Okay. Let's go over the answers. Let's take a look at the first sentence. I didn't know it was Christoph at first. He's grown a beard since the last time I saw him. So, you've seen this person, okay, before. So it should be recognize, right? Okay. So to recognize, okay, to recognize means to know the person because you have seen them before. Okay, so in this situation, we need to use recognize. Number two, I only need to look at the phone number briefly, means to look so at something quickly, right? So this is easy. It is glance. How many of these people can you put a name to? So when you see someone and you can say their names, this is identify. I look for you at the park, but I didn't see you. Where were you? So you were looking for people. You were searching for people. So this is spot. Okay. If my parents see me playing games when I should be doing homework, so this is something you sh something wrong in this situation, right? So when people see someone doing something wrong, this is catch. Number six, he learned the job by watching and studying what the other staff member did. So watching, studying, meaning to watch something carefully. This is observe. Finally, I saw that the window was open when I heard a loud noise outside. This is noticed to be aware of. Okay, so now you should be a lot more familiar with the seven verbs about. Seeing in the future, when you use them, do consider the situation you are in. Okay, now let's take a look at the new article. Again, I'm going to go over the structure with you one more time. For the introduction, we will identify three components. What are they? Background, problem, and solution, or what we call an argument or a thesis statement. And in an article, we usually have two to three body paragraph. Each paragraph should start with a topic sentence, two to three supporting sentences. And for the conclusion, the author usually、uh, reiterates the main points and offer us more insights. Okay. So these are the three reading strategies: skimming, scanning, and closed reading. I'm not going to go over the details here. You should know how to use them properly already throughout our lesson. Now let's start reading. 
Let me read the introduction to you. While I'm reading, try to identify the three、uh, components. Next time you are in a busy city center, look up. The chances are there will be a CCTV camera somewhere nearby. So CCTV, what does it refer to? If you look at the bottom right of your page, you will see CCTV stands for closed circuit television, a camera system used for watching activity in some places. Many large cities have thousands of security cameras on buildings, next to roads, even in public buses and trains. They are supposed to prevent crime, but there is a problem. No matter how many cameras are in place to catch people breaking the law, criminals can always be identified. For one thing, the police. Can only put a name to a face if they have a file on that person. Also, if the criminal is known to the police, the CCTV image is often of such a poor quality that is possible impossible to recognize them. Okay, so for the introduction, okay, for the introduction, we can see、uh, the author describes the current. Environment we live in is one with CCTV, closed circuit television, and whenever we are looking at problem in the introduction, we look for transitions, right? So where do we see the transition? You see the transition in line six. But so what is the problems here? Criminals are unidentifiable on camera. Because police cannot put a name to their face, even they have a file, okay, showing that that person was there. So, what's the solution? We still don't see a clear sentence that tells us the solution, right? So, in this situation, this article either does not、mm, offer you a clear solution, or the solution is in the following paragraph. So, let's read a bit more. Impossible for most people, that is, but not if you are super recognizer. There are people; these are people with amazing ability to remember thousands of faces and pick them out from the crowded street, even if they only see them for a moment. At soccer games, for example, the police must spot troublemakers immediately before they start fighting, and this means acting fast. The 152 super recognizers employed by the London police can do this, and they get results. So the solutions here is we can have super recognizer help us identify criminals. Okay, identify criminals. And from the second paragraph, you can see what these people are capable of. Okay, so this is the introduction. Even though we have CCTV around us, sometimes、uh, police have trouble identifying criminals on camera. So they ask people with superpower, the power or the ability to recognize faces, for help, and they are super recognizers. Now let's read the body paragraphs. Okay, so for the body paragraphs, please. Do the same. Identify the topic sentence. Number the supporting sentences while I read them. Okay, to you. So the th- the body paragraph. The police didn't need to worry. For example, when there was trouble in the streets in 2011, officers. Set in CCTV control centers, observing the scenes on TV and picking out known criminals for their colleagues on the ground. Just one member of the team, Gary Collins, was able to identify a total of 190 troublemakers. The police later arrested many of them. Others weren't allowed to go back on the streets. Okay, so here in the second or in the third paragraphs. Okay, we see a definition of a super recognizers. Okay, and then we see two examples of how super recognizer help the police officer. From the second paragraph, you see them help with the soccer games, 
And then from the third paragraphs, you see how Gary Collins helped、uh, the police officer identify 190 troublemakers on the streets. So this is amazing. Okay. So from the second paragraph, we learn the definition of a super recognizer, and from the third paragraph, we learn about an example of how Gary Collins, a super recognizer, was able to identify many troublemakers. Okay, let's keep reading. You might think that with a memory this good. A super recognizer must be good at remembering lots of things, but Collins admits he can't even remember a shopping list. I have to write that down, he says. Scientists believe that the ability to recognize faces is different from other kinds of memory, and uses a special part of the brain. Damage to that area of the brain can cause face blindness, where people can't recognize faces at all. Having said that, most of us are really good at recognizing faces. We are even able to identify people who identify people we know from the back of their heads and from the way they walk. Something computers are unlikely to do in the near future. However, we can call do we can all do it as well as professionals like Gary Collins, who did it better than ninety nine percent of the population. So. We learn something surprising from this paragraph, which is super recognizer can be forgetful, right? Pay attention to the transition here in line thirty. But okay, so the point here is the sentence that comes after but. He can't even remember a shopping list. So from the scientific facts here, okay, we can see that. Uh, recognizing faces from different kinds of,、uh, from different people, okay, uh, is uh, activated by a special part of the brain, okay, and if that area is damaged, you can have a symptom called face blindness, okay, face blindness, okay. Let's take a look at the conclusion. You might also be in the top one percent and not even know it. So, if you are looking for a job where you are allowed to watch TV all day, you should find out whether you are a super recognizer and join the police. I will、uh, ask you to do a test to see if you are in the top one percent or not, to help you know whether you are a super recognizer or not. Okay, so this is the article about. Super recognizer about super recognizer, and from this article, I will also encourage you to underline the seven words of seeing that we just learned previously to reinforce your understanding of them. Okay, do that. Okay, so now let's do a comprehension practice. So for this comprehension practice, please take a look at activity five on page sixty. Okay, let's take a look at number one. The article mentions two problems with CCTV. True or false? This is true. If you look at line nine to line twelve, okay, you do see two problems. Okay, you do see two problems. Can only put a name to a face if they have a file on that person. Okay, and then the second one is. Uh, the image is of poor quality. Is of poor quality. Number two, one answer to these problems is to install more cameras. No, okay. The problems are all caused by cameras, so it doesn't make sense to install more. Number three, super recognizer don't need to look at a face for long in order to identify it. So this is true. If you take a look at line sixteen to seventeen, you will see、uh, ability to remember thousands of faces and pick them out from the crowded street, even if they only see them for a moment. This is true. Number four, the police use super recognizers to prevent violent situation from developing. This is also true. If you take a look at line seventeen to eighteen, you will see. This is true, okay. 
from the soccer games. Number five, if you are good at recognizing faces, you will probably have a good general memory. This is not true. If you take a look at line thirty-one to thirty-three, you will learn how forgetful Colin is when it comes to remembering a shopping list. Number six, to become a super recognizer, you need years of training. Okay, this is false. Okay, if you take a look at line forty-two to forty-three, okay. You will see. You don't need to, okay, be trained. Okay, you don't need to be trained at all. Okay, and it is in fact not mentioned at all either. Okay, so this is the comprehension exercise. Now let me push you a bit more. Let's talk about CCTV a bit more. Now we are living in an environment where we are surrounded by cameras, so the word surveillance is key. Okay, it's important. What does it mean by surveillance? Surveillance means the careful watching of a person or place, especially by the police or army, because of a crime that has happened or is expected. Okay. So these are the words we will use, or adjective we will use to describe surveillance: close surveillance, constant surveillance, around round the clock surveillance means you are look being watched twenty four hours, and regular surveillance. Okay, so surveillance really is a key word in the twenty first century because everything and everyone is being watched round the clock. Now take a look at these two images. Try to think about the implication of these images. Look at the one on the left. We you see six CCTVs, right? And why is the screen of each CCTV have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and then this one is oh I suddenly forgot this one. This one is an app. That you can do some videos, okay, with people, okay, and then this one I don't know. Anyway, these are all social media applications, right? So why are social media applications shown on the screen of CCTV? Why, and what message, okay, or what implication does uh, the image want to tell us? And then here you see one, two, three, four, five, five CCTV. Okay, directed at a woman here. So what kind of environment it is? Is it describing? And what implication、uh, does the image want to show us? Think about them to help you put、uh, surveillance into perspective. Okay, into perspective. Okay, so please do that to help you develop critical thinking.